Well, several communities are turning the tornadoes into a positive when it comes to rebuilding their cities. They plan to rebuild bigger and better. Kalisha Whitman joins us live from Pleasant Grove. Kalisha, how is the rebuilding coming along there? It's coming along just fine, Ani. I talked with Amir earlier. He says it's a process, but progress is being made. I also spoke with a resident, and she agrees with Amir when they both say that through encouragement of the community and other areas that Pleasant Grove is rebuilding, and they both say they hope it will be better than it was before. Broken tree backs and scattered debris still remain, but in the midst of it all blooms new life. <laughs> Here in Pleasant Grove, six months after a deadly tornado left its mark. You know, my first thoughts was, my goodness, why us? You know, uh, you, you just can't imagine unless she was here how bad it looked. Pleasant Grove resident Annette Long says there isn't a day that goes by that she doesn't think about it. And she still remembers what was going through her mind as she and her family took cover. Uh, a lot of stuff. Um, is this really possible? Is this really happening? Um, Where, I mean, is it right here? Her house was destroyed, but she and her family are just days away from welcoming themselves in their new home, in the exact spot where their old home was. We gotta remain positive about this, and I, I it, it, this will once again be a, a, very, a very vibrant um, neighborhood, you know, once it's all said and done. And building back is contagious. I'm looking at probably 15 or 20 houses directly in front of me right now that, you know, uh, are all under construction and, and probably every one of these houses are better than what they were before the storm hit. But to see what it was, to witness what it's becoming, and to know the possibility of what it could be is enough for some to want to keep building back this city. Now, Annette Long says, just like the owner of this house, that this was all a learning lesson for Pleasant Grove, and not just this city, but for other cities. If you see here, this is a safe room that the owner of this house has built inside to make sure that if anything like this ever happens again, that they have a plan, they're ready, and they can go inside. Live in Pleasant Grove, Kalisha Whitman, Alabama's 13 News. But first, our top story at 10, a big night for Birmingham. For the first time, a new state-of-the-art facility was put to use. We were there to find out if the new Birmingham Crossplex was a success. And good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Royer. And I'm Andrea Lindenberg. We're streaming this newscast right now on alabamas13.com. Tonight, hundreds of athletes are in the city. They're not here for football, though. The important facts on our top story, those folks are here for the Cranberry Classic, as it's called. It's the first swim meet to be held at the brand new Birmingham Crossplex. It was built at the old fairground site out in West End. Kalisha Wetman was at that event tonight. Kalisha, this is the first time Birmingham has had a place to host an event like this. Was it a success? It is the first time, and Mike, it looks pretty successful. And you know, like I said, this is the start of it all. It was also the start of what many who support swimming in this area say is a legacy of success thanks to the new multi-million dollar multi-purpose facility. Off the block and they're in, but while they're swimming or getting the team pumped for the race, they probably aren't thinking about the fact they're diving into water. It's part of a $46 million project. Parents and supporters say it's $46 million well spent. It's fantastic. It really is an opportunity for Birmingham Swimming to take a step forward and to, to really grow. This is an exciting time for this area. It's going to do nothing but enhance swimming in the Birmingham area. There are more than 600 kids here at this inaugural sporting event. And guess what? Some of them are even Olympic qualifiers. For some, swimming at a facility like this makes those Olympic dreams seem more like a reality. I'm ecstatic. I'm ready to go. It's just, it's really great. For high school swimmers to be able to use this, it's, it's amazing. And even though the parents are watching rather than swimming, they're enjoying the multi-million dollar view. Well, you know, we were told that this was a brand new facility. We did not know it was the inaugural event, so we're very excited to be here. Our swimmers from Enterprise Alabama are tickled to be here, and we've got some high school kids here, and it's going to be a great time. A great time that includes a lot more dives off the block at future swim meets and this multi-million dollar multi-purpose facility. And, you know, everybody keeps saying it looks like a pretty place, and it is a very nice facility. The Cranberry Classic wraps up Sunday, and there are teams there from Mississippi, Tennessee, as well as across Alabama. Mike? All right, Kalisha, thank you. Kalisha, what did you see today? 
Well, I saw almost 50 students out there helping out in Demolition Day, and the day was basically just designed to gut the playground in order to welcome in some new equipment there, and the YWCA officials say the students here from Birmingham Southern were greatly appreciated. Shoveling, busting, uprooting, and planting. All day, these Birmingham Southern students have been here at the YWCA giving back to the community. Early in my process there, it seems like they're making a big point um, you know, to focus on community service. The YWCA playground is in need of a 21st century facelift, and these students picked the right time to help out. It's amazing, you know, life is all about paying it forward, and these students had a choice, and they chose to come and help us and rebuild this playground for the children um, who need it, who need a safe place to play. Right now, it's all about the demolition process, but soon the YWCA will host a rebuild day, and after that, the children get to have their playground back. A BSC service leader says she wants the students to always uphold the university's tradition of giving. Maybe not today, but eventually during their four years of Birmingham Southern, they'll learn to reflect on why there's a need for service and how they can be a part of change in their communities. However, for Jay Meacham, the reflection process has already started. God has blessed me with a lot, and I think it's important, uh, you know, to give back. And, and if you're blessed, I think it's really important to bless others. And when the kids start to enjoy their renewed area, Jay knows that's when the blessing of giving back will go into play. Okay, today was demolition day, but rebuild day is September the 10th, and that's the day the children will actually get to see all of the work that everyone is doing for them. Live in Birmingham, Kalisha Whitman, Alabama's 13 News.